week on Milk Street, we traveled to Mexico City where we learned to make a tortilla casserole. It's called Pastel Azteca from Esmeralda Brin. Then we wake up very early to go to the Coyacan Market where we stop by La Cocina de Mi Mama to cook pork in Veracruz sauce with Adriana Luna. So please stay tuned for the cooking of Mexico City. Funding for this series was provided by the following. That meal. You sauteed, you seared, and you served. Cooking with Allclad. Bonded cookware designed, engineered, and assembled in the USA for over 50 years. Allclad. For all your kitchen adventures. So, Maria. Yeah. Hola. Hola. I'm traveling with Maria Taka, our guide and translator, who's showing us all the neighborhoods of Mexico City. So Chris, this stall actually is very, very, very important, very interesting. Tell me about Mexico City. It's huge, it's almost 20 million people. It kind of reminds me of Tokyo. Is it now so many different cultures, it's kind of hard to describe? Well, I think Mexico City is like a melting pot of different things in all senses, because we have people from all, all parts of the country, uh, but we also have a lot of foreigners and a, a lot of different vibes. Also, we have, you know, a big amount of indigenous cultures, so it's always a continuous exchange of cultures. Then there are parts like Roma and Condesa, where you can listen to so many languages being spoken. So Mexico City is like a kaleidoscope of things. It's, in a way, a representation of what the country is in itself. This is gorgeous. This is Roma. See, si, this is um, Colonia Roma. This is one of my favorite plazas. It's called Plaza Rio de Janeiro. Uh, it's very beautiful. There are some vegan carts here. Really? Yeah. Uh, but also, you know, the classical ones, where you sell tacos, tortas, uh, tlacoyos, that is a very traditional. What is that? Mm, they look like ovals. It's really representative of Mexico City as well. And they are filled with either, either fava bean or cheese or chicharrón. Chicharrón. Mm. Si. It's a very, very, very traditional one that before the tacos, before all these restaurants in Roma, this was the original food of Mexico City. It's cool, no? Yeah, that's very good. Yeah. Sometimes it goes with chipotle, for Ooh, example. I like the chipotle. That's See. good. And we're also cooking pastel azteca, which is the most um, approximated reference to this is uh, the lasagna. We use tortillas. We use green salsa, Ooh, chicken. That sounds good. So yeah, it changes a little bit. We're visiting Esmeralda. She teaches foreign people coming to Mexico. Good. Gracias. Gorgeous. This is a very old part of the city as well. We're not so far from Centro. Mucho gusto. Mira, Chris. Hola. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm a Chris. Esmeralda. We are going to do something called pastel azteca. We have the tortillas, which is the Mexican ingredient. Chile poblano, that's also local. You have to grill it and burn the skin off. And then we put it in a plastic bag, close it and make it Steam. sweat. Yeah, it gets steamed and then you can peel it off very easily. We have wild turkey. It's usually made nowadays with chicken, but it used to be done with turkey, with uh, rabbit, with different kinds of uh, birds. But then you have the cheese and the cream. This is a very simple thing that you can find in Mexican families, not in restaurants. It's pretty weird. I was going to say that, <laughs> but I, it's okay. Wild turkey. <laughs> I'm gonna add the corn. And you said butter is more of a northern Mexican ingredient, not something. Yes, 
But I also like to use butter with turkey because turkey can be a little bit intense and dry. So to fry it with butter makes it more creamy. So I just want to wait for the corn to be, we call it dorado. It's actually a cooking method that I haven't found anywhere else. <laughs> it's a cooking word. Dorado, what is dorado? Las cosas, to make it golden. So it's not even, you know, it's not frying, it's not roasting, it's not, it's make it golden. So it's, it's... <laughs> so it's like when the Millard uh, procedure yeah. reaction starts to appear, right? I, I come all the way to Mexico City and someone's talking about my art. <laughs> Taste is better though. Mmm. Wow. You should give up your professional career and start a chain, the Mexican lasagna chain. <laughs> this has so many things going on, right? I like the layers of mm. flavors, right? Because you can taste everything. And like the typical American tourist I am, I'm just gonna stand here and eat the whole plate, right? <laughs> oh. So, Esmeralda, thank you so much. As they say in Italy, molto bene. <laughs> Gracias. You know, the last time I was in Mexico City, uh, we walked the streets a lot, had a lot of great street food like pork tacos. But I was also introduced to a recipe called Pastel Aztec, or Aztec pie, or also known as Mexican lasagna by Esmeralda Brin. Now, this recipe has lots of takeaways that you see in lots of cooking in Mexico, and it starts with poblanos. Now, we've taken the poblanos, put them in a very hot oven, 450 oven, for about 10 minutes to char the outside. So let's get those out. So, this is now 10 minutes or so in a very hot oven. We'll take them out, put them in a bowl, uh, and cover them, which will steam them so we can get the, uh, the skins off easily. So one of the things I found cooking with lots of home cooks uh, that week was they almost always started with the blender sauce. Uh, the sauce is made with peppers or uh, tomatoes or tomatillos in this case, and then it's put into a pan and cooked along with other ingredients. So we'll start this with uh, tomatillos, which is a pound and a half. Uh, we have a cup of cilantro, three cloves of garlic, uh, just whole cloves that have been peeled, a little vinegar, two tablespoons of vinegar, which is nice, and two teaspoons of cumin, and a little bit of salt. And we'll just blend that until uh, it's smooth. Now we're gonna heat up a little oil. So once the oil is hot, we're gonna put the salsa in the pan, cook it for five or six minutes, just to thicken it up a little bit. Now be careful when you pour this in, because it will splatter. So it's done, I can run a spatula through it and I can see it's thick enough. Now we're gonna start by reserving half a cup of the sauce be using that later. This is a pound of boneless, uh, skinless chicken thighs. An onion, uh, it's been chopped. A teaspoon of cumin, uh, and then a little salt and pepper. Quarter teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper. So we'll just mix that up. You wanna keep this on medium low, a very, very low simmer. You don't want anything to stick. So it's up to a simmer, we'll put the top on. Uh, we'll cook this 15 to 20 minutes. So meanwhile, we have the poblanos. We roasted them uh, for about 10 minutes at 450, let them steam, and we'll take them out. I like to use uh, paper towels to try to get the outer skin off. Or my fingers, whichever works best. Now that we've skinned the poblanos, we'll chop them up and we'll finish cooking the chicken in the sauce. So those are ready to go. Uh, we'll continue cooking the chicken until it's done, about another 10 minutes. 
Obviously, the chicken's cooked. It's been shredded. We should have about three and a half cups. If you have more than that, you can cook it down another couple of minutes to get it a little bit thicker. So now we're gonna add the balance of the ingredients to the, the basic sauce here. The poblanos that we skinned and chopped. A cup of corn. Uh, fresh is better than frozen, but if it's frozen, please defrost it first. And then a quarter cup of cilantro at the end. And we're good. So now we're gonna build uh, the pastel azteca. Now we're gonna use a nine inch springform pan with some foil around it. So we'll start with half of the reserved sauce. We reserved a half a cup. So we're gonna put a quarter cup at the bottom. And now we're gonna build this Aztec pie. We're gonna start with two and a half tortillas at the bottom of every layer. Now we're gonna put half of the uh, chicken mixture on it. Next up is the Mexican crema. Now, it's a little like sour cream, but it's not. It's about 30% fat, which means that it's not gonna separate when it's heated. Sour cream does tend to separate. You can make this at home if you can't find it. Uh, use some sour cream, heavy cream, a little bit of lime juice, and let it sit for a couple of hours. It's a little tangier uh, than sour cream, but as I said, it has more fat, so it's really good uh, for baking. And then we have the cheese. Now, we're gonna use two kinds of cheese. Uh, pepper jack, because it melts so well, has a little bit more flavor. In Mexico, they might use, obviously, a lot of uh, local cheeses. Casillo, for example, which is like a mozzarella. They have some smokier and sort of richer cheeses they might use. But this is what you can get here, and it works pretty well. So we use about a third of the cheese now, because we'll end up topping this uh, with two kinds of cheese at the end. This is where it resembles the lasagna, it's the cheese. And then we're gonna uh, repeat. So we have tortillas as a base. I'm gonna put the remaining chicken mixture on. We're gonna use the balance of the crema. By the way, if you can't find it, you can use creme fraiche that has enough fat in it so it'll work uh, well in a hot oven. Another third of the cheese. We have the final uh, round. So to finish off, we have three more things. The balance of that uh, sauce, the pepper jack cheese, and finally some cotilla, finely grated cotilla cheese. It's a cow's milk cheese. It's a little bit salty, which we like a lot. The more it's aged, the more it has kind of a, a funky flavor. Uh, it's really delicious. It's not that hard to find. So this goes into a 375 oven for about 35 minutes and you want to see the top really start to bubble. So we took it out of the oven onto a cooling rack for half an hour and then sprinkled it with toasted uh, pumpkin seeds and cilantro. So let's cut into it. So pastel Aztec, it has a lot of fresh flavors. It has the poblanas, the crema, the cheese, it has the chicken, the corn, cilantro, cumin. It's really an interesting, complex series of flavors. And thanks to our friend Esmeralda Brin, we have a whole new way to think about lasagna, pastel Azteca. We drive through Mexico City in the early morning and we're headed to the Coyacan Market. It's chilly, and inside the market, it's sparsely populated with the occasional worker pushing a handcart. It really is the calm before the storm. You know, Mexican markets are an energetic mix of eateries and bars. Uh, there's produce and crafts, snacks, clothing, toys. And walking down the narrow aisles is, in fact, an art. So you're likely to bump into brightly colored dried chilies, open-jawed skeletons, or piles of mole powder and paste. And after threading the Coyacan needle, I finally head to the back of the market, and I'm seeking out Adriana Luna. She's the proprietor and chef at La Cocina de Mi Mama, and she's gonna cook us her version of fajitas called Puntas a la Vera Cruzana. Adriana, thank you so much. Uh, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. We're going to cook some filetes a la mexicana, puntas de filetes. She's going to add a twist to it that it's one that she really likes, it's Veracruz style. So she's adding some olives, and this that we call chile güero. What is chile güero? It's una chilaca 
eh, seca, pero con este color. It's very... Um, you're going to say mild now, right? Mild. I knew it's you were going to say mild. It's mild, but also in color. And it's not spicy. <laughs> I, I know you well enough not I to trust you when you say not spicy. This is carne de cerdo en fajitas. So this is pork. This is bistec. Oh, that's pork. Pork to cut like fajita style. Okay. Vamos a agregar el tomate. When the tomato releases its juices, she will add some uh, sea salt. And she's pointing that this salt is from Nayarit. So it's the Pacific side going north. Every chef in Mexico City has a different opinion about which salt is best, right? They all have their little region, right? She just likes how this kind of salt sort of goes with all the cooking she does. Para... Sí, ya, lista. <laughs> Esta salsa me gusta mucho usarla para gozar mucho de ponerle comino. Ajá. She said, I've tried uh, fajitas in the States, and I've noticed they really like putting, adding cumin. She doesn't like cumin at all, to put it here. She's very clear that the fajitas in the States are really terrible, right? No, no, no. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Las aceitunas. So now she will add the olives. Y los chiles güeros. Agregar la carne. So she'll cover it again to release the juices of the meat. Está listo. It's ready. Great. Yeah. This is a very quick dish. Sí. Hmm. So, yes, this is better than our fajitas. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Mm. <laughs> that is so good. Layers of flavor. There's a little bit of spice, but not too much. And everything just goes together so well. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. So the energy in that market with all of those colors and sounds, and I can only imagine the smells, is so vibrant. And that vibrancy is really reflected in the dish that we learned there, puntas olivera cruzana. So chef Adriana Luna taught us the recipe, and she taught us that puntas means tips, which is paper thin pieces of pork uh, tossed in a Veracruz sauce. Olivera cruzana means in the style of Veracruz. Veracruz is a state on the Gulf Coast of Mexico. It's where the Spanish Spanish first arrived in Mexico, and with them brought some Mediterranean flavors. So you'll see that reflected in the dish. There's tomatoes, tons of garlic, capers, olives, and parsley. So let's get started with the pork. So I have boneless pork loin chops here. We're gonna slice it really thin, about a quarter of an inch thick, which can be a bit challenging to do when the meat is raw. So a great tip is to just pop it in the freezer for a little bit. You don't want it to get frozen, just firm it up a little. That'll allow your knife to kind of slice through really easily. And that's what I've done here. So let's go ahead and slice. So you want these pieces nice and thin, so they're very tender. So everything is done in one skillet. I'm gonna add a little bit of neutral oil. So while that's heating, I'm gonna season the pork with salt and pepper. So the oil is just smoking, so I'm gonna add the pork in a single layer. So we're browning the pork, but we're also adding a little bit of flavor to the pan where we're gonna build the sauce. Now this will only take two or three minutes to get browning. We're only gonna brown it on one side, then we'll take it off the heat and we'll finish cooking it later in the sauce. So now we can add the garlic. There's a lot of garlic in this. This is 12 cloves of garlic but we want to take it off the heat when we add the garlic. And that's because this pan is really hot from cooking that pork, and we don't want the garlic to burn. So we'll use the residual heat of the pan to get this started. We'll put it back on the heat, but this time at medium. 
So we'll let this cook here for just a few more minutes, just until it's nice and golden brown. So now we'll add some chopped onion and a little bit of salt and pepper. And we'll let this cook until that onion is nice and translucent and soft, about five minutes. These are jalapenos. Jalapenos on the mild side of chili peppers. I'm going to seed them and stem them and cut out the ribs inside. Cutting out the ribs and the stems will make them a lot less spicy. We can add those jalapenos we just chopped up. I've got some cored and chopped ripe tomatoes. Make sure they're ripe. And a few bay leaves. Once it comes to a boil, we'll cover it and lower the heat and let the vegetables cook. In the meantime, I'm gonna chop up the main ingredient, which are the olives in this. This is truly what makes it a Veracruz sauce. You'll always see olives in a Veracruz sauce. So this is boiling. I'm gonna cover it. Reduce the heat to medium and let those vegetables soften. This will take about eight minutes or so. So the vegetables have softened. We have a lot of liquid in the pan now, so I'm gonna actually crank up the heat to medium high and let this reduce. And you actually wanna thicken it quite a bit, almost over thicken it, because when we add the pork, plus the juices from the pork and the juicy olives in, it's gonna loosen the sauce. All right, so this looks great. As you can see, it's nice and thick. I can drag my spatula right through it. Add the pork back in. And any juices from the pork should go in as well, because that's a ton of flavor. And then the olives. And we'll just let this cook just until that pork is cooked through. That's really only gonna take a minute or two. All right, this looks great. So I'm gonna take it off the heat. We'll take those bay leaves out. And now we can add the capers. So you're gonna add some really nice, bright acidity to this and some parsley. So I'm gonna do this fajita style in a charred tortilla, but you could also have this with a side of rice and beans. Wow, that looks amazing, it's so vibrant. You can almost smell each individual ingredient in there. So pork and Vera Cruz sauce. Thank you to Adriana Luna at the Koyakon Market for introducing us to this dish. You can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season of Milk Street at MilkStreetTV.com. Funding for this series was provided by the following. That meal. You sauteed, you seared, and you served. Cooking with all clad. Bonded cookware designed, engineered, and assembled in the USA for over 50 years. All clad. For all your kitchen adventures. Hey everybody, Christopher Kimball here at Milk Street and thanks for watching us on YouTube. By the way, please subscribe to our channel and also click the bell for updates. All the recipes from our current TV season are available for free at our website, which is 177milkstreet.com. That's 177milkstreet.com. Thanks and enjoy our shows.